Hi, my name is Jeremy Adams, and I will be presenting on behalf of my group, Rachel Hanneman and Wyatt Engelman, about our topic. Our topic is orthopedics and how prosthetics have changed the field of orthopedics over time. Orthopedics is defined as a branch of medicine focusing on the correction of deformities found in the skeletal system and related structures such as bones, muscles, tendons, and ligaments. The term orthopedics was created in 1741 by Nicolas André, who was the Dean of Medical Faculty at the College of France. Prosthetics are defined as artificial replacements or substitutes for a part in the body, such as a hip, knee, leg, arm, or even a tooth. Early prosthetics were made from very easily accessible materials, such as wood and leather. In ancient Egypt, a foot was made using wood and leather for a deceased woman because they believed she would not get a foot, she would not be able to move on to the afterlife. Later on in China, a horse hoof, wood, and a sheet metal strap were used to replace a human's foot. Fast forwarding to the 17th century, Peter Verdun created the first below knee prosthetic leg. This was primarily made of wood with steel straps and screws holding the pieces together. A simple washcloth was placed inside the leg to make it more comfortable, and the user would have to wear a belt with straps to attach and hold the leg onto the user. Then in the 19th century, James Potts invented the first above-knee prosthetic. This design was very similar to Peter Verdun's design, but it featured a hinge at the knee allowing the prosthetic to bend and move similar to a leg. Prosthetics did not get a lot of attention in America before World War II, but after World War II, the American Prosthetics and Orthotics Association was created. This was in response to the number of veterans who suffered injuries during the war that caused them to become amputees. The goal of this organization was to assist veterans by giving them artificial limbs and helping them find jobs. A major problem with early prosthetics is the reaction that the limb had to being held against foreign materials constantly. It was very common in artificial leg owners to have their leg become raw and eventually infected. This was starting to do more damage than good because many people died from these infections. This led to the invention of the suction, suction sock. In 1946, the suction sock was invented by a group of engineers at UC Berkeley. This invention made leg prosthetics a lot more comfortable to wear and significantly reduced the pressure that was being put on legs in the, of prosthetic users. And finally, the modern day design of the prosthetic leg was invented in 1975 by Isidro Martinez. Although there had been many technological breakthroughs since 1975, the basic structure that Mr. Martinez designed is still used today. Overall, modern prosthetics have provided a high quality of life for amputees and has even led to the creation of the Paralympics, where athletes who have suffered a severe injury can still compete for their country on a global scale. Without modern prosthetics, many Paralympic events wouldn't even exist. Classification of prosthetics. There are four types of prosthetics used today. Transtibial pro a transtibial prosthetic is a prosthetic that replaces the calf, ankle, and foot portion of the leg, or below the knee. Transformal prosthetics are prosthetics that replace most of the leg, including the knee, calf, ankle, and foot. Transradial prosthetics are prosthetics that replace the arm below the elbow, or replace the hand, wrist, and forearm. And finally, Transhumeral prosthetics replace most of the arm, including the elbow, but not the shoulder. My group selected Oser as the company we wanted to research because of their wide range of offered prosthetics. They were founded in 1971 and their headquarters are located in Iceland. They, are curr they currently employ over 4,000 employees around the world and their primary purpose, according to their mission statement, is to develop cutting edge prosthetics joint replacements, and braces for all types of people worldwide.
As mentioned before, OSER provides a large range of prosthetics including feet, legs, arms, and hands, as well as producing the necessary products to attach these devices to the patient. OSER also designs and produces the necessary parts for joint replacements such as shoulders, knees, and hips. OSER offers a wide range of braces as well. They design and produce braces for a wide range of injuries that do not require surgery but require the patient to have limited motion in that portion of their body. OSER sets themselves apart from a lot of other companies by designing an amazing technological interface that doctors utilize to decrease the room for error in the fitment of OSER's products. This technological interface allows doctors to input the necessary data to create the part for the patient in an extremely efficient manner so that the patient spends less time waiting and more time recovering. The product that we chose to research is called the ILIM Ultra Titanium. The ILIM Ultra Titanium is a prosthetic hand designed and produced by OSER. The hand is easily attached to the required mechanism, which is provided by OSER, which allows maintenance and repairs to be done without the patient waiting with a technician. This device also has two direction rotation at the wrist, allowing the patient to type and then pick up a glass of water smoothly and efficiently. The device does have five fingers that can make a fist or give a high five, allowing the patient to complete everyday tasks that non-amputees can do without thinking. Lastly, this device comes with a rotating thumb which provides optimal grip on a wide range of objects. The ILIM Ultra Titanium also comes with four different control methods, including eight automated gripping actions to allow a new user to become familiar with their new prosthetic. We were unable to speak to the company about what the four different control methods were, nor were we able to gather what eight grips were utilized in their design. Here is a demonstration video from Touch Bionics demonstrating the eye limbs operation. The ILM Ultra Titanium is composed of a titanium skeleton with a plastic cover. The entire assembly is put together with stainless steel screws to avoid rusting in wet environments. The device utilizes a number of bipolar stepper motors to allow for two directional movement at most of the joints within the hand. The attachment point where the hand attaches to the arm also has a bipolar stepper motor to allow for two directional rotation at the wrist. The targeted audience of the ILIM Ultra Titanium is a rather large group of people. There are a range of genetic birth defects such as radial club hand and ultra club hand. Both of these birth defects affect the hands and can sometimes be solved with a series of surgeries. For the situations that cannot be fixed by surgeries, OSER, with the help of a certified medical team, can step in and deliver an artificial hand to the patient in their late teens. 
This is because artificial hands cannot be installed until the patient has reached the age where the growth has either slowed or stopped. Wrist disarticulation amputees are also a targeted audience for the ILM Ultra Titanium. Wrist disarticulation is a medical term for someone who has had their hand and wrist amputated for any reason. OSER can provide them with a working hand efficiently and safely with the help of a surgeon. An interesting fact about OSER is that they work with many major American sports teams to provide athletes with braces and therapeutic devices to help them recover from injuries. Teams from the NFL, NBA, and NHL are a few examples of organizations that utilize OSER's braces in their products. Along with professionals, everyday people can also utilize these products to assist their recovery and increase their comfortability at work and at home. Thank you for watching our presentation and I hope you enjoyed it.